Morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. Weather well, Channel does have you covered from coast to coast, of course. Heck yeah, we do. And we're going to let you know what is set to come from the sky this weekend. You got rain, you got uh, hail too, kind of like what we saw last weekend in Texas, and hopefully will not be the size of, say, Easter eggs. So. Yeah. That would be a huge yeah. hail. A grouper would be even worse. Oh, the worst. That yeah, absolutely. Be, thankfully, we don't have to deal with hailstones that big. Man, this stuff can be damaging. I yeah. mean, quite the time you had there. So, yeah, we're hoping that we won't have the repeat performance. And uh, Did you say grouper? I did. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, hailstones can get really big depending on the strength oh. of the updraft. But thankfully, not as big as groupers. Yes. It's a big fish. It's a big fish for sure. Big fish. <laughs> All right. Let's get going. we got a lot to talk about today, though. Um, the rain is finally moving out of some spots. I indeed it is. And we're going to jump right is melt and we could have some flooding because of it. So I'll show you all of it. We'll start with the rainy spot in Portland, Maine, where we've got rain all day long today. Well, mo I won't say all day long, most of the day, uh, even by three o'clock. Um, we'll probably have some showers around, but then finally exiting at this point. Temperatures hanging out in the upper 30s, kind of a raw day. You don't have a lot of spring like feel to the air out here today, except for the fact that it's raining and not snowing. It's been raining for a lot of us here. It's been adding up here. A number of spots coming in with their wettest March on record so far. You look at places like in New York City, LaGuardia Airport, JFK, Bridgeport, Connecticut, more than 10 inches of rain. In New York City at Central Park, we saw more than nine inches. Portland, we've seen more than 10 inches of rain, and we're going to add to more of that for today. Rainfall out there in Boston as well. And you look at this radar. I mean, there, there are some wet snowflakes falling out there. Western burbs, maybe, you know, just go out towards the hills a little bit more. You'll get into, I'm mean, not accumulating snow, but snowflakes nonetheless here on this last uh, wrap up here as we uh, wrap, wrap up the week this Friday. We've got rain and snow up into parts of Maine as well. Temperatures are on the chilly side. It's a raw situation out there. Winds are gusty, making it feel even colder. Boston right now, gusts are running about 25, close to 30 miles per hour. So with temperatures hovering about 40 degrees, it's going to make it feel like it's in the low 30s. The rainfall is a concern, not just because it's been heavy and it's been heavy all month, because it is falling on ground that is frozen and is snow covered. And that's why there's a flood watch up here in eastern Maine. So we've got snow with rain falling on top of it here. And the concern is that we'll get some flooding coming out of that rainfall through the afternoon hours. So you see this rain. This is through about lunchtime. Finally leaving Boston about two or three o'clock. Finally leaving Port, Portland just after that, hanging on into northeastern New England until tonight. And then finally, with this thing, moves on out. But wow, does it take even as early tomorrow morning to do that? Reynolds. Thank you. Five or six inches so far in Park City, uh, not too far from there. Brighton picked up a foot of snow already. A couple of spots in the Sierra picked up about a foot of snow already, like around Soda Springs Ski Resort. And that's before this has yet to come in. This is our big storm system for the weekend. You can see it all spiraled up out here off the West Coast. There's actually a tiny little low up to the north, which is bringing us a little bit of shower activity off the coast of western Washington and northern Oregon. But really, it's not raining in Seattle. You're doing fine right now. Temps running a little on the cool side, 41 degrees, but dry. This is the main event. The rain comes in today. Now rain has moved into San Francisco and the Bay Area. We'll get that rain down through San Jose. Mountain snow will be adding up. I-80 travelers heads up. There will be some restrictions getting in through the weekend. We've got heavy snow there um, and more than a foot in spots coming in on top of what you've already seen. That we also do have the rain spreading all the way down the coast and there may be some thunderstorm activity that we will be watching into your Easter Sunday. A couple of inches of rainfall down down here and that's why there are some flood concerns. Flood watch is up already here. Santa Barbara, all of Los Angeles. You go down through Oceanside and San Diego. We've got flood watches with that risk of flooding starting today through tomorrow morning, kind of spreading through the Central Valley and down the coast. Saturday into Sunday, we're going to keep an eye on Southern California, but then spread it out Sunday to Monday with some of that moisture moving into Arizona by this point. Rain again spreading southward today and spreading inland. Today's going to be a tough one for the mountain snow as well, starting overnight tonight into tomorrow and then we'll see that expanding. Look at all this moisture spreading across parts of Utah and even Colorado. Get some new fresh snow into the mountains there. Ready for the holiday? Weekend. We got a poll going. You can vote. Options are on vacation, maybe going to Easter egg hunter festivals, traveling to see friends or family, or maybe you're just staying home to avoid the crowds.
So dressing up in a bunny costume and running around. It wasn't an option, but you can write that in, Reynolds. Gosh, I mean, that's always our option. That's what we do. <laughs> always. I mean, I mean, it's just our thing. I dress up as an egg and you're the bunny and it's just dangerous. <laughs> it always is. Okay. Well, Doc says. Yeah, suits <laughs> and egg costumes. I mean, that one, like what do you trouble. need? That's a party in its own right. Actually, here's something interesting. When I was yeah. in, for Greg, I guess, I don't know. It's cute. It's a cute oh, little nickname. Yeah. Again, what's interesting is I had a great friend that was a flamingo. And flamingos are from eggs. So they it kind of goes full circle. It really yeah. does. It's incredible how it's that works. It's flamboyant. That is such good advice. You know, when you think about it, most of the time when people get into trouble, it's because they aren't relaxed here and they start to get frantic. And so relaxing, floating, doing what you can there to stay safe. We have had six fatalities, six deaths this year, five in Puerto Rico, one in Florida. And let's hope we don't add to that list here. We're getting into a busy time, especially with spring break. A lot of the uh, college spring breaks have happened, but now we're getting into the high school spring breaks and kids going to the beach. And you know, rip current risk is out there. We've got a high risk today along the Florida Panhandle beaches. We also have a high risk across the west coast of Florida. We're also looking at a few spots down here in southeast Florida, like around Miami Beach. And that's where the water temperatures actually are warm enough that you're really going to think about swimming. The water temperatures here in the mid-70s. Elsewhere, it's a little bit cooler. I mean, low 70s there on the west coast of Florida. I think that's tolerable. But mid-60s there in the Panhandle, tough to think about swimming, right, with water temperatures all that chilly. We've got rainfall in the forecast over the the next five days, although it doesn't come for a few days. So you see that map and you think, oh, it's going to rain. Not necessarily. It doesn't come until the middle to the end of the week for you in the panhandle. Miami, we've got a dry week ahead. Today's forecast, you started off a little chilly this morning in the 60s. And for South Florida standards, that is chilly. Uh, we'll have another chilly morning tomorrow, and I'm going to put that in quotes, but warming up nicely through the afternoon and more like it Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with overnight lows here settling about 70 degrees, highs in the 80s. Key Largo, Florida, looking good. Temps are going to be in the mid to upper 70s. No rain in the forecast for you. Beautiful weather ahead. Orlando, we've got a dry forecast too, which is great to see. And we start heating up by Tuesday. We could hit the 90s. All right, Reynolds, everyone is also gearing up for perhaps traveling. So kind of front loaded in your forecast. It will improve later on. Atlanta, uh, other than the pollen, I don't think you can top this. It's beautiful. Yeah. Really could nice. Be, could be a smidge warmer. Houston and Miami, I think, are topping it. Yeah. There you go, a smidge warmer. We got 73 degrees, and we see uh, possibly some of the more mild air being conducive to the potential of some storms firing up later on. Yeah, so let's look at this. You know, it's possible here into parts of Iowa, Illinois. Um, we've got that chance of this evening of some spotty showers. You're watching a place like Chicago. It's really not until tonight, though. So your day today is dry, Chicago, but look at this. Absolutely. Your thunderstorms are a possibility overnight into tomorrow. Yeah, no doubt about it. By early in the morning, we see this, the, the, actually the tower cams in Chicago could be pretty interesting. Looking east mm -hmm. as we have. Have a lot of the showers moving. You might across. be watching this on the show tomorrow. We'll be there, yeah. definitely. <laughs> tomorrow we've got more of that moving across the Ohio Valley and breezy for you in Boston. Yes, yeah, so and then we'll keep an eye on that continuing to move east into with the rest of Illinois, into Indiana, Ohio, and even Pennsylvania tomorrow. Then looking ahead to Sunday. Wow, the Southwest, we could have thunderstorms in Los Angeles. Could happen just the opposite in Seattle. A mix of sun and clouds. Beautiful conditions from Mount Rainier all the way to Mount St. Helens, Medford with 62 and partly cloudy. Yeah, so we've got this system coming into the west. You know, it comes in Saturday with the rain in the Bay Area, and then on Sunday down to Southern California. Meanwhile, that whole system kind of drives what's happening in the east as well. With the trough in the west, we get this warm front that's lifting up and chance of thunderstorms out there. Absolutely. Sandwich between parts of the Great Lakes, the Ohio River, and every spot. But also from Cincinnati, Thunder Boomers with 67. Uh, let's see, Detroit, mainly south of you, you find the moisture and still some snow out towards the west. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So there is a trough in the west, some cooler temperatures out there. And when that happens, we've got generally a ridge across the east, especially the southeast. Look at temperatures warming up to the 80s on Easter Sunday all across the south. Absolutely. Could be booming in terms of some, well, we've got spring storms. So we're going to deal with them for that. Let's go to Jim Cantori was, well, we were in Carbondale, and Jim was supposed to witness the most the most time in totality during the total solar eclipse. But then you had this cloud that moved overhead the stadium where we happened to be in Carbondale, and it happened right as we had the big moment. Terrible timing for that Unbelievable. cloud. Unbelievable. Now, for this year's total solar eclipse on April the 8th, he's hoping his luck will change. With severe seasons starting to ramp up. So we're going to talk about that in today's Coffee Talk. Starting off with where we are. You know, we usually get severe, even January, February, but certainly in March here. It actually doesn't seem like it's been the busiest of months. Yeah, we had one kind of burst of activity right. in the mid-month, the mm -hmm. Ides of March, no surprise. Um, but other than that, it's been relatively inactive. Relatively. It doesn't mean right. we had nothing. But certainly March can be a lot busier than that calendar. It's also interesting where we mm -hmm. saw the oh, severe weather so. in March.
Yeah, when you look at the climatology of tornado reports for mid-March, you can see that, well, the greatest on average is in the southern U.S. Mm -hmm. But all those little red dots on that map show you where we actually saw tornadoes during that period. And look how many of them were outside of that main zone. In the Most upper Midwest, where so, many, so often we have snow on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So proof positive that what you may expect sometimes is not exactly what you can, you might get. Weather versus it's, climate. Yeah. There are always yes, fluctuations. Yeah. And just you know, we had such a warm winter, warmest on record for mm -hmm. so many. Um, and, you know, and I think that helped maybe drive where we saw the storms. But what's interesting though is that we, you know, we haven't seen a busy March. We're running actually below average when it comes to tornado reports. That is true. And sure. it works. You are sort of, you sort of uh, go stair stepping mm -hmm. your way up through the tornado season, right? You get these periods of inactivity where the line the red line is flat and then it goes up immediately with an event right a couple of days worth of severe weather reports and then it's flat for a while that's how mother nature works in this episodic kind of way where we kind of go up and down mm -hmm. and up and down but never like a steady mm -hmm. smooth curve right and we, we see the weather patterns changing sometimes we've got storm systems moving through quickly sometimes yeah. it's slowly um, and so as we get into April you know what are we going to see changing that's kind of the next thing we want to talk about where are we going to focus in on the risk of storms you know it is really interesting and looking at some of the longer range guidance out there it feels like that we're going to see a lot more troughs in the west that means for those of not not familiar dips in the jet stream so cooler and stormier weather in the west uh, warmer more humid air more unstable air in the southeast so this map as we go into early April, which shows where the typical risks are, mm -hmm. it may kind of line up with that. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see, I think, more signal for chances of severe weather in the southeast. Yeah. But sometimes, though, you can see things evolve and change. Yeah, it's not yeah. ever always locks out. Exactly. I know it was written granite. Good deal. You know, May traditionally is the most active month when it comes to tornadoes. But, mm -hmm. you know, just thinking back to some of your, your travel reporting from storms, Reynolds, the past couple of years, it's been April, don't you think? It has been. It has been. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's always interesting how conditions can be, well, they can be wrong or right. I mean, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. But we have had some weird exceptions. Yeah. We'll get this on Monday. Uh, looks like a pretty good chance going through the show me state, but cleared in into portions of the 35 corridor. Wow. Yeah, I think all hazards are in play. I mean, SPC said it outright. You know, we got wind, hail, mm -hmm. and a tornado threat as well. Interesting. Kind of right on schedule for yeah. where you would expect exactly. it and the timing of exactly. when you would expect it. Well, let's revisit the, the great Easter candy. You're and watching the baseball and the pollen too. Plenty of it, there, no doubt. It's a good combination. Go like that. All right. Yeah. Well, you can go to Thread. Send us your comments.